Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, I'm convinced that one of the key factors in the future of the church is going to be people who are people of joy. Every single person in life, we all know someone who is joyful, someone who just seems to take everything in stride. They're content no matter what comes their way, no matter how difficult life may be. They just seem content. It's not that they're happy or excited that life is painful or stressful, but they just seem content. They seem at peace. They're okay. We all know a few people like that. I would venture a guess that we all know a lot more people who aren't like that. The Oscar the Grouches, the Karens of our world, if I can use a 2021 term. You know, people who are just grouchy and negative and kind of see everything as miserable and life as not very good and just down about everything. We all know people who are joyful and we all know some people who just don't really seem to be that way. And yet as followers of Jesus, as disciples of Christ, we're called to be light in the darkness. We're called to be salt in the world. And I'm convinced that one of the ways that that's going to be seen the most in the future of the church is through joy. There's a great definition of joy. I've used it for years, and I go back to it often. It goes like this. Joy is a sense of contentment and peace that comes from our soul, produced by the Holy Spirit, as we see God at work in our lives and in the world. In other words, joy can be developed. We can all live a life of joy. Joy is not something that is set apart for an elite class or, you know, pastors and clergy or the spiritual elite of our time, joy can be produced and developed in every single follower of Jesus because it is a sense of contentment and peace because we look at the world and we see God at work and the Holy Spirit produces in us a sense of contentment and peace and joy because God is at work. Now, the secret to joy is really twofold. There's two parts of it, and I love how Paul puts together his letter to the Philippian church because he, he basically shares through all of Philippians the theme of, of joy. And the two things that he really shares a lot of as the secret to joy in the book of Philippians, it's twofold. He says you have to have a faith in God's sovereignty, but also joy is the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ. And Paul writes about this theme all through the book of Philippians. For instance, in Philippians chapter 1, starting in verse 6, and then we'll jump down to verse 12, Paul writes this, I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually advanced the gospel. Well, Paul is writing so positively and, and, and with some sense of contentment and joy that God is at work. He is writing this from a prison cell. How can he write this, these positive lines about the advancement of the gospel when he's stuck in prison and not out advancing the gospel? It's because he sees God at work even in difficult circumstances. He sees the people who have thrown him in prison who are now kind of a captive audience for him to share the gospel with. He knows that the leaders around him are going to hear the gospel because he's going to have to be brought on trial and put before them. And so even in negative circumstances from a prison cell, Paul looks and he says, God is at work. All of this is serving to advance the gospel. And because of that, Paul had joy. He was content. He was okay. He was at peace. Typically, when things around us don't go the way we want, our natural course of action is to try to control it. Well, I would have more peace if my husband would just. Well, I would have more peace. I'd be more joyful if my wife would just. Well, if I could just get my kids to do, then I would be... And you can fill in that blank with anything, work and politics and all kinds of stuff. And we typically try to control it, but Paul doesn't try to take control of the situation. He sees, even in a negative situation, a situation of suffering and imprisonment, that God is sovereign, that God is at work. But it wasn't just God's sovereignty. It also came from knowing Jesus Christ. He writes this in chapter 3. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss.
in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I consider them as dung or rubbish, a, a pile of trash, so that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Everything in Paul's life he considered to be loss compared to that of knowing Jesus. And that is completely counterculture to us because we put so much value on stuff and things now that we can control. Maybe you have a beautiful home, the most beautiful home you've ever lived in in your entire life, the biggest home you've ever lived in in your entire life. But because of the maintenance and the insurance and stuff breaks down and stuff doesn't work right, slowly over time, you don't have any more joy and contentment and peace in the house. Maybe it's because your home was of more value to you than knowing Jesus. Maybe you have an amazing car, a brand new car, uh, your dream car, and you finally have it and you're so excited, but over time you're losing joy in the car because of maintenance and wear and tear and all of the stuff that comes with having a vehicle. Maybe some of the joy and contentment in that is going away. Maybe it's partly because you put more value in your car than you put in the fact that you know Jesus. So when things get difficult or when the maintenance becomes too much, you, even in relationships, you start to lose a sense of joy and contentment because you're, you've placed that value for joy in something that is unworthy, something that is temporal, something that doesn't last. Joy, contentment comes from faith in God's sovereignty. Even in my suffering, God is at work, and it comes from the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ. Everything in my life should be considered loss compared to knowing Jesus. Let me end by telling you a quick story. A couple years ago, I was having coffee with a, a gentleman. He and his wife had recently, um, at the time, gone through a miscarriage. And typically, when I'm working with people, I, I anticipate certain words coming from them and uh, what I heard from him was completely different from what I normally hear. His thought was this, I'm seeing the eternal. God is at work. We're going to see our daughter again someday. God is sovereign and he's all powerful and I'm okay with that. I felt like my faith was being grown by a guy who was in an extremely difficult, painful situation. But because he saw God as sovereign and he knew Jesus, he was okay, he was content, he had peace, even in a difficult and painful situation. That's what joy looks like. He wasn't doing cartwheels and happy because they had lost a child, but he had joy and contentment knowing God was sovereign and he was going to see his daughter again someday. Confidence in God's work, that's where our joy comes from. I want to invite you this week to spend some time praying and asking God to help you experience joy that you'll begin to see even in a painful situation that you will actively pursue and say, God, help me to see you at work here. Help me to see you as sovereign, even in painful situations, even in difficult situations, even with everything going on in our country and in our world, all the stuff that is happening, help me to see you as sovereign over all of it, that you are working it for your good, that you are moving it forward for the advancement of the gospel. Father, help me to see you as sovereign. Jesus, help me to know you more. I want to know the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ as Lord. I want nothing to come before that. Nothing is greater than knowing Jesus. Would you take time and pray for that this week? God, give me those things. Help me to see that. Help me to sense it. Help me to live it and experience joy and contentment and peace because you are at work. That's one thing, and if you're really interested in another next step, I would encourage you to read the book of Philippians. It's four chapters long, one chapter a day. You'll be done in four days, and the theme through Philippians is so amazing. Joy and contentment in God's sovereignty and in the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus. May each of us who are watching this, who are connected uh, here to this video, may each of us know the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ and having a faith and the sovereignty of God. And may you be more joyful this week than you've ever been before. God bless.